obviously they got away from us. We uh, really struggled on the defensive end and the play hard. I was going to say I didn't think we played particularly hard, but there were some some uh, bright spots. But to give up 72 in the first half really puts you in a in a bind. You're climbing the the hill the whole second half, and finally when we started to play a little bit better, we cut it to whatever a 10 and. Um, yeah, it, it just, we, we got to be better defensively. And like you said, some of it has to do with um, personnel, but the job of a coach is to kind of figure it out and we got to do better. Thank you. Kelly, you go. Hey, Coach, um, you talked about bright spots. You know, is that kind of the whole thing about this whole six-game streak, the, the losing streak? You know, obviously the defense hasn't been great, but there are things to look forward to, like Tate's progression. Dale House had a pretty good game coming back. Um, David's game today. Is that kind of going to be the most important thing as you, you know, keep these games going before everyone comes back? Yeah, I mean, obviously you want those guys to um... – progress and, and improve and, and have good games and play well. But it's a lot better for them to play well in the context of winning basketball. So um, doing things that, that can help the team win. Not saying that they're not at all because they are doing things that are winning, winning plays and making winning plays and doing winning things. But, um, you know, it's disappointing to, to lose and to lose six in a row, regardless of as many guys of, as we've had out in this stretch. Zach Allen. Hey, hey, coach. Speaking of defense earlier, how, how did you like the one-on-one -on -one progression between Russell Westbrook and, and Daniel House? And, and coach, what do you tell this team after the six loss and the optimism through all the injuries? What do you tell this team? What's the message for this team going forward, coach? Yeah, uh, the one-on-one, -on -one, I didn't really even kind of get into the one-on-one -on -one stuff. It's more the team stuff. And when we got to our switching, um, we tried to do our best as far as keeping guys in front of us and not allowing them to draw help. That's what was happening. They were drawing help and kicking the three-point shooters or finishing in the paint. I don't know how many. Yeah, they had, what, 50, 50 points in the paint, so... Uh, we need to do a better job of that. Um, as far as the message to the team, it's staying with it, um, remembering the things that got us to a point where we, we had won six in a row, seven out of eight, right before Christian got hurt, and now Christian's out, and we've lost six in a row. So uh, finding a, a way to kind of bottle that which we had prior to Christian's energy uh, injury with our energy, with our defensive mindset. And, and I continue to say with our group, it, it really is our defensive, how we play defensively and whether we're in the game or not, if we played a good defensive game against Miami and we were right there, uh, we didn't play a good defensive game tonight and we lost. So um it really is like making sure that we're uh, focused on the defensive end of the floor and not allowing the make or miss to affect our defensive play, which is like the age old question or the age old issue in the NBA, which leads to, to better, right? Is it good offense leads to good defense or good defense leads to good offense? And is, is it, if you play good defense, does the offense matter? Or if you play good offense, does the defense matter? And uh, we can't let one affect the other. And that's a little bit of what's happening because we're obviously not shooting the ball well. We haven't shot the ball, ball well, especially for the last three games. And uh, part of that is affecting our defense. Ryan Bearfield. Uh, Coach, when DeMarcus is out on the very effective that uh, limited his playing times when other teams go small. 
Uh, you were cutting in and out. Can you repeat the question? I said DeMarcus has been when he's floor, uh, but when the teams go small, is that's what affected his play, his playing time? Are you, uh, I'm sorry, you cut out one more. Can you ask one more time? You cut out like at the most important part of the question you're cutting out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. Being here no in Houston, it's going in and out. Yeah. Uh, I said, is DeMarcus, uh, DeMarcus has been affected when he's been on the floor. Is when teams go small, is that what affecting his playing time? A little bit, yeah. I mean, when, when they're smaller, it is harder for, uh, for us to play them. We try to make sure that the matchups are good um, when, he, when he's on the floor. But, uh, yeah, without, without Christian, it's, it's a little different. So um, to answer your question, yes, is, is the answer to your question. But, um, yes, is the answer. Thank you. Brianna Holmes. Uh, Coach, tonight through the TV, it was it seemed like a very quietly competitive game um, with how close the score stayed, but still the players seemed like really calm. I mean, how was it in the arena tonight? What was the mood like? Mood was quiet. <laughs> the mood was um, not like an NBA game, really. It was... You know, there's no fans in the stands. John is coming back in this situation and there's no cheers or boos or there's the NBA is so much a part, like momentum is so much a part of the NBA and there is no momentum generated by the fans. And it is a little bit of a, I guess, downer or whatever, but uh, that's what we, that's what we're dealing with. Both teams have to kind of have to deal with the same thing. And overall, I thought, you know, our spirit was pretty good and, uh, we had some, some pretty good fight, Wish we could have played better. But, uh, as far as the mood, it's different. It's different not having fans in the, in the building. And just following up with my pregame. One question. One, I'm sorry. Oh. One question, please. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ben, ben Dubois. Coach, of your four regulars that are out, PJ, Victor, Eric, and Christian, do you have a sense for any of those guys that might be back sooner rather than later as far as the end of the road trip in Philadelphia? Are any of those guys potential options for that game? Yeah, well, Christian definitely isn't. Um, and the other three, I don't really know. <laughs> I would like to say all three are possible for the Philly game. They're all kind of moving in the right direction, but watching them today, watching them work out, it didn't look like they're all three of them were ready for an NBA game. So hopefully tomorrow brings a little bit of health for those guys and we'll be able to play. But the only, the only one who's out right now, I think is Christian and Christian will be out for a while, obviously but the other three are still kind of day to day. And I wish that it was, uh, I had a better answer for you and a better answer for me, but um, that's all I got. Our last two Good, questions, thank you. Mark Berman. No, Go I'm ahead, good, Mark. Steven. I was gonna ask you about the, the injury, so I'm, I'm fine. Thank you, Sean. Okay. All right, last question, Dave from Clutch Fans. Hey, Stephen, along the lines, you talk about the injuries and sort of the uncertainty of when they'll be back. Do you see this as possibly accelerating the timeline on a guy like Kevin Porter Jr. or Kenya Martin Jr.? Possibly. I mean, um, if these injuries kind of linger on for a little while, then it's possible that one of those guys could come back with Ray and his injury tonight. You know, it didn't didn't look good, and it doesn't seem that that's going to be a an option for us uh, moving forward. We'll we'll see what the tests bring tomorrow, but just off the initial, it didn't seem like uh, he'll be playing anytime soon. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to poke around and see and, and see if one of those guys makes sense to to come back and uh, and join the team. Thank you. Thank you, Coach.